Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Welcome unter the shell. That is how we greet in general. What does that simply mean? It simply means welcome to the presence of God. My names are Leo Walsh, Jeremiah Joseph from our church Gewina Shem International Journey. And today we start a new journey. We start, we, we begin a new travel, a new series. And this series, I believe, is a revolution for your soul, revolution for your spirit, and revolution to your body as well. Because today, I, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will bring this word into your soul, into your body like never before. Let's just quickly dedicate this day to our Heavenly Father. Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege, for the grace and mercies and the blessings and the hope and the assurance of salvation. Thank you for this beautiful day you have made. We are glad indeed. Come shine your glory. Come shine your power. Bring light out of your world today and let our world begin to see the effectiveness of your light. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Wow. I just begin to see some of the things right now. May the Lord bless everyone that will come in Jesus' name. Yes, before we begin today, it's a privilege really to be able to speak to my audience today with English because we have been with the German language for a very long time. And I believe it is a time for us to also reach everyone who can understand English. Today is a topic that the Lord put in my heart for the church. And it simply means The gift of grace. The gift of grace. We'll be talking to, we'll be talking about this topic today. The gift of grace. And I believe the Lord Almighty have so so many stuff for us in store to give to our spirit. And I'm I'm going to be talking about grace. Because we are saved by grace. We are called Christian by grace. We are who we are by grace. That is the reason why I want us to understand grace is not what you have done. Grace is who God is. That is the reason why in German language and Italianish language and also in English, the word grace starts always with G. Well, let us first of all look into the German language. It's called Gnade start also what? With G. Because grace starts with God. Grace, God is grace. That is his personality. He is called grace. That's the reason why it starts with G. For example, let's go into the Italian. This is German language. It's called Gnade, grace. Simply means God person, personality. And in Italian language, it's called Gracia. And what does that simply mean? Start also with G. And grace start with G. What is the meaning of all this thing? It is a, it's, it's a sign for us to understand that grace is all about God. Grace is all about God himself. Grace is a, it's, it's a revolution because we are saved by grace. We are who we are by grace. Before I continue to, before we go deeper into this realm of grace, by the grace of God, I will be exposing so many secrets of grace. But in these teachings, in this series, because we start a new journey today, in this series, we are going to be looking into three dimensions of grace. We are going to be able to draw strength from these three dimensions. We are going to be able to see how God plan, how God hope. That we should be like Jesus on planet Earth. The main purpose of grace is for us to receive God on the unlimited favor. Before I begin today, many of us wish to receive healing. 
Many of us wish to receive wonder, miracles, freedom, deliverance. Many of us wish to receive so many things. Many of us always hope for something good. But I will not lie to you. This word, grace, is the key to all miracles. Grace is the key to healing. Grace is the key for you to even understand what is written in the Bible. That is the reason why I stand here today with the help of the Holy Spirit and to try our best here to explain to you, to you everyone that will be alive right now, that will come later, to understand the magnificent power of the gift of grace. Because grace is a gift. And what is a gift? A gift is something you never worked for. That is the reason why the Bible says something, grace is un, un, unmerited favor from God. Grace simply means unmerited favor from God. In other words, what is favor? Favor simply means I never worked for it, but I received it. I never sweat for it, but it came to me. Somebody did the job, I have to enjoy the job they did. That is the reason why the Bible said in the book of John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him shall be what? Saved. That is grace. We didn't work for it. We didn't, we didn't ask for it. We didn't, we didn't beg for it. We didn't seek for it. About grace found us. Grace came to us. He came down as a man and died for us and gave us new life. And this life is in us, poor Kayada. This life is in me. This life is in you as you look at me right now. This life. This life. So many of us can say, yeah, I know grace. But listen to me. Without grace, without grace, you cannot receive there is no healing for your body, for your soul, for your spirit. Without grace, there is no deliverance. There is no deliverance. In Jabba, we call it briefing. Without grace, there is no healing. In Jabba, we call it hailing. Without grace, only ignore as you cannot hide them, as you cannot be, as you cannot be found. Because grace is the first key that opens the doors to all gifts. Because grace is a gift you must receive. It's for example, somebody come to me and said, Leo, I just have a, a gift for you. What, what should I do? I will receive the gift. And when I receive the gift, the gift becomes my own gift. It becomes my property. Jesus Christ came, died on the cross of Calvary. And gave us grace. And with this grace, we are able to assess healing. With this grace, we are able to assess deliverance. With this grace, we are able to assess riches in the kingdom. Prosperity. Of all harm. We are able to become what the Father in his imminent mercy plan for us. There is something I want us to understand. The work of grace. The gift of grace must be received. The gift of grace is what we need today. The gift of grace is what we must cry for because it's, it has already been given but we must understand how to use it and live with it. Grace is not to expose you to what you don't know. Grace is to bring you to a dimension of who God is. Grace is to expand your life to bring you to where God wants you to be. Grace Unmerited favor. Grace is something that is so real, that is so raw, that is so powerful, that is so strong for us to understand. I want us to understand grace is the first key. The Esther Shuse, the first key. Uno primo chiave, the Esther key, the, the Esther Shuse. Because without grace, you can never receive healing. Without grace, you can never receive deliverance. Without grace, you can never receive prophecy from God. Without grace, you cannot even hear the voice of God. Without grace, you cannot be called a Christian. Let us quickly see what the Bible, what the Bible 
spoke or that have spoken concerning this word grace. What I want us to understand in this series, I will not be able to give us every, every round of grace. I will be able to touch some parts that will help our life to build us up, to give us inheritance in the midst of the saints. Praise Master Jesus Christ. And in this grace, in this grace, in the gift of grace, Apostle Paul gives us a very perfect example of what grace is like, of how grace is being received, of how grace should be recognized, of how grace should be used, of how grace should be processed, of how grace should be enjoyed, of how grace should be understood. Grace is not just a thought. <laughs> you cannot, you, you don't think grace, you receive grace. You don't feel grace, you must have grace. You don't just think about it as a thought. Grace is a gift. Grace is like this Bible. You can see it with your eyes right now in my, in, in my, in my hands right now. Grace is a gift. I can see grace in my life. I don't know about you, but I will first of all thank everyone that is helping us today, this camera work. May God bless all of you in Jesus' name. And this grace, I can see it. You see, this is my holy Bible. I can see it with my eyes. So is grace. It's a gift. And this gift, you must receive it. Because if you don't, if you don't know, know why grace is in your life, you will abuse grace. You will misuse grace. You will undermine grace. Because without grace, we cannot be here standing with you. I cannot be here standing before you, giving you the sword of God that can be able to save your soul and give inheritance in the midst of all things. Praise Master Jesus Christ. The gift of grace. The gift of grace. We are, we are going to be seeing what the Bible spoke about this word. And before I begin, may the Lord bless this word this morning. The book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. I'll, I'm turning up right now. I'm turning up. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We read from verse 20, from 27. We'll be ending up 31. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1, verse 27 to 31. As the Corinthian brief, chapter 1, verse 7, so and verse So, we will see what the Lord spoke there. And the Bible said, but God, I start 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But God had chosen the foolish things. Wow of the world to confirm the wise and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confirm the things which are mighty <laughs> I said before we are where we are today because of God's grace I, I know we have experienced so many so many things have happened from the first day of the year 2020 or to, up to now we have experienced so many fears so many so many encounters, so many thoughts, so many reasons, so many attitudes have embraced us. But we are still here. We are not dead. We are still alive. We are not dead. We are still running with this world. We are still living with this world. We are still, we are still existing on planet Earth. Why? Because the grace of God have shined into our life. The grace of God have brought light into our life. The grace of God have opened our eyes. For us to see that there's always light at the end of every tunnel. No matter how dark your world is right now. No matter how sick you are. No matter how you feel bound. There is still a God to lose. Because what? He said, I have called you by name. He says something, say something. It says here, the foolish things, he make them to be strong. The weak things, he make them to become mighty. Where do you find, where, where have you find yourself today? Where are you right now in this life? Where are you right now in your situation in your life? Where are you right now? Because if you cannot find where you are, you will never know where you are going to. If you don't know where you are standing right now, how can you move forward? Praise Master Jesus Christ. And the Bible, we continue our reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 28. And base things of the world, and things which are despised have God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. Wow. 29. 
that no flesh should glory in his presence. That is the reason why we will start our message, we always say something in German, welcome unter the shame. What does it mean? Welcome to his presence. And the word welcome unter the shame is not just a word we coined, it's a word from the Spirit. Because it is by grace that we can appear before God. It is by grace that we can speak with our Father. It is by grace that you can hear me today. And that grace is a gift. And that grace must be understood. And that grace must be received because it's an unmerited favor. We didn't work for it. Somebody died. Somebody gave his blood. Somebody was flogged. Somebody was beaten to death. Somebody was marked. Somebody was nailed on his fist, on his hand. So that we can receive this unmerited grace. And this grace is what we need to receive healing. And this grace is what we need to receive deliverance. And this grace is what we need to change our destiny. And when you understand that this grace is in you, 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 you become unstoppable. When you understand that this grace is in you, you become, you become ununderstandable from, from people around you. You become an enigma. You become a mystery. You become a wonder. You become an answer where you are right now. Grace. Grace is what we need. And the Bible says something in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29. That no flesh should glory in his presence. 30 says something that I've turned my life around. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Wow. Who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and the redemption. See, see, in this grace series, I will be bringing us into three dimensions of grace. Three dimensions according to what the apostle here gave us. Christ was made unto us wisdom and righteousness. Wow. Christ was made unto us sanctification. And Christ was made unto us redemption. And I'll be trying to break down what this word, what the words here mean for us, so that we can understand the never dying word of God in our spirit, so that we can receive this grace, so that we can, we can know what the Lord had planned for us, what the Lord had in stock for us, because you need grace to assess the miseries of God, you need grace to know the plan of God, you need grace to be a pastor, you need grace to be a, a mama, a, a, a father, a, a, a daughter, a son, wherever you are right now, you need grace. You need grace to be effective in what you do and how can you how can you enjoy what you don't know you have and how can you use what you have if you don't know how to use it it's a mystery i i have this pen in my hand and i know the purpose of this pen is to write on the board if i have this pen and i don't know how to use it i will always abuse it by making it to be useless in my hand the purpose of this Bible is to show me the love of God and to pour into my spirit the grace of God. The purpose of this board is to display what we are writing. So the purpose of grace in your life, you must draw them out of your spirit. The purpose of grace, you must understand what it's all about. That is the reason why today I stand here to show you what the Lord wants us to receive in this time. Before I will come back, I want to show us the book of Romans. 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 Roman brief. Romans. Romans chapter 5. Romans 5, verse 21. And I read by the grace of God that a sin hath reigned unto death. Even so might grace, wow, reign true righteousness unto eternal life by Christ Jesus our Lord. I said from the beginning that the word grace starts with G. Also in German language, is also G. Also in Italian language, is also G. Why? Because grace starts with what? With God. And, and Jesus Christ is the middleman of grace. Because without Jesus, we could, have, we, could, we could have never received this grace. Jesus was the one that gave himself 
so that we can understand what grace is all about. Jesus is the middleman. There is no other middleman. I am not your middleman. Jesus Christ is the man in the middle, the man in the middle, who decide, who have brought it to us, and he has given us this gift of grace. My beloved, my brothers, my sister, wherever you are, I want you to understand you have this grace in you. You have this grace living inside you. You have this grace in an empty vessel. You have this grace in your flesh. You have this grace in your spirit. You have this grace in your soul. I pray for everyone watching right now. And the Lord Almighty, to open your eyes to see that you have this grace in you. And to see that you have this grace living inside you. To see that this grace is alive in your spirit. To see that this grace is alive in your thinking, in your life, in your business, wherever you find yourself. Praise Master Jesus Christ. I want to quickly do some stuff that will open us to a new realm in the, in the realm of the spirit. Praise Master Jesus. We are still talking about our topic, the gift of grace. The gift of grace is our series. Today is the introduction, the anthero, the introduction. We are still talking about the topic, the gift of grace. Grace, I have been able to break grace. I dissect grace. I'm going to give us the first dimension of grace. The word G. The word L. The word A. The word C. The word E. I'm going to be able to break this word down so that we can understand and assess something strong what grace is all about. The first word for grace starts with God. It starts with God. Grace starts with God. There is no other way. The beginning of grace is with God. The beginning of grace is with God. I'm re-echoing that we should understand. You can never live or exist or, or enjoy life without God. Because of time, I will be very fast right now. And the other one is redemption. Re -dem -tion. And the third one, this one here, is a word that by the grace of God, I have been able to Break it down at 80. Then see, I told you something, that Christ, Jesus Christ, is the middleman. That we can receive grace. Because God is grace. If you must receive him, you must receive him through Jesus Christ. If you must enjoy grace, you must enjoy it through Jesus Christ. If we must live by grace, that simply means we must live through Jesus. There is no other option. There is no other, there is no option. There is no other way. It's the only way. Hallelujah. Then Christ. Hallelujah. Then E. Expense. This is the first dimension. The first dimension of grace. I'll be giving us three dimensions of grace in this series. And the other week, the other week, the other week, we'll be covering it one after the other. But today, we are going to be covering the scope here in order for us to understand the purpose of grace. And because grace starts with God. And the, the first dimension of grace is redemption. What is redemption? Tune in next week, you understand what redemption is all about. And at Christ's expense, somebody paid for it. Grace is the redemption of life in us. That is the very first dimension. The second dimension, hallelujah, hallelujah. The second dimension to grace is Better power. But write it in 30 minutes that you can understand what I'm doing. Here. The second one is God's right choosiness. Just how it's so quiet, it's a little bit too small, but I'm trying my best to give us how we should understand it. The first one 
The very first one is God. And the second one is righteousness. What is righteousness? Tune in, in, in two weeks' time. We'll be dealing with it. What, that, what the meaning of that word, the righteousness, is the second dimension. It's the second dimension we'll be enjoying in this series. We are just trying to give us the introduction to what grace is all about. To understand the gift of grace. To enjoy this gift. In this, we live in a moment or in the hour, Christmas time, where every one of us become, we will receive gifts from our father, from our brothers, from our sister, from everybody. That when somebody give, my question is this, when somebody give you a gift, Will they come back again and say, I need it back? No. When I give you something, it belongs to you. You have to use it effectively. That is the reason why we are doing this series, the gift of grace. The very first dimension I have spoken is God is the grace through redemption. I simply break it down. Grace simply means the first G start for God. The first L starts for what? Redemption. And the other one acts Christ's expense. Because without Jesus Christ, the middleman, we could not enjoy what grace is all about. And the second dimension, which I am right now, is righteousness. And the Bible says righteousness. We're going to be talking it about we're going to be talking about righteousness in two weeks' time by the grace of God. And the last one. In this three dimension of grace, I will explain it to us. There's something that I believe you will like it. Riches. Wow. Riches. Riches. Wealth. Christianity is not, is not equal to poverty. Christianity is not glash amount. No, 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 no. Christianity is not Iguale um, uh, povel. No, 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 no. Christianity is not equal to poverty. Christianity is not equal to arm. Christianity is living the life of Jesus on planet Earth. And we're going to be covering it, these three dimensions in this series. I'll be very grateful if you take out your time. And join us next Sunday again to experience this gift of grace. You have them already in you. Because the day you say to Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. That day, a portion of grace was released to you. But we must understand, grace must be growing. Grace is like a child. You must grow up with the child. You must expand the child. You must make the child grow. You feed the child. You give the child food. You give the child water. Grace must be fed with the word of God to grow. Grace must be fed with the word of God to expand. Grace must be fed with the word of God to be effective. Grace must be fed with the word of God. Because without the word of God, your grace cannot expand. Let me give us a perfect example. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, Luke, chapter 2, verse 52, there is something happening there that I want us to see. Luke, chapter 2, verse 52. May the Lord bless his word today. Luke 2, 52. And the Bible says something, and Jesus Increase in wisdom and in stature and in grace with God and with man. In other words, Jesus increased in wisdom. How? Because he dwelt in the word of God. He rested in the word of God. He obeyed the word of God. He trusted in the word of God. He relied in the word of God. He was living from the word of God. It was hidden from here. He, he, he saw the word of God as his source. He saw the word of God as his source, not his resources. Because source does not have ending. Resources will sum the end. Jesus understands the efficacy of grace. Jesus can understand the effect of the gift of grace. And he grew in this gift. And he developed in stature in his grace. 
God gift. I just want us to understand that in this series, we'll be dealing with, it, with this thick acronym, grace. We start with the word God. Redemption. At the expense of Christ. We're going to be seeing what the Lord has in stock for us. We're going to be enjoying and living under the power of his mighty hand. May God bless you. May God increase you. May God let his light shine upon you and cause his face shine upon you. May God bless everything you do this week. You are healed wherever you are. You are free wherever you are. You are blessed wherever you are. And next week, we will see you again. Until then, as we say in German, welcome unto the share. What does it simply mean? Welcome to the presence of God. We will see you next week. And all to them, keep believing on his presence. God bless you. God bless you. We love you all. We we'll see us. We we'll see us again next week. God bless you. And forget not grace. You have it already.